Hello, um, so we are back to do some more examples. Um, so in the first one, you want to find the limit as x approaches zero of this expression. Okay, now notice that um, when x goes to zero, if x is zero, you have zero here, the square root of nine is three, and three minus three is zero. So up here, you're gonna have a zero. But as x goes to zero, this also becomes zero. So you're going to have zero over zero. Okay? And this is indeterminate. This is what is said to be indeterminate. Whenever you have zero over zero, or infinity over infinity, you are what is called an indeterminate uh, form or expression. Okay. And so when that happens, then the easiest thing to do really is to um, is to rationalize. And then put this in the form that um, the indeterminate nature of this expression will go away. Okay, so we'll rationalize this. You, have, you take the square root of x squared plus 9 minus 3 all over x squared. To rationalize it, we multiply this by this expression here, but this turns into positive, right? So you have x squared plus 9, instead of minus, now this is plus, and you divide by the same term, so that you retain the same expression, right? So you have this x squared plus 9 plus 3. Okay, nothing has changed, because this cancels that, and you have this, which is the same as that. But now, if you multiply this out, you're going to multiply this by this, and then this by that. Okay? When you do, what do you get? Well, notice that when you multiply square root of x squared plus 9 times square root of x plus 9, the square root goes away, and you just have x squared plus 1, 9. All right? Then you have square root of x squared plus 9 times 3, so that is plus 3, square root of x squared plus 9. Then you take negative 3 times that, that gives you negative 3, square root of x squared plus 9. The negative 3 times, neg times 3, that is negative 9. Right? All of this over, you're going to have x squared times all of this expression here. So you have x squared multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 9 plus 3. Okay? Good. So notice that when you do that, what happens is this cancels, right? This is 3 root this, this is negative 3 root, same thing. So this guy cancels out. Look at this, I have positive 9 here, I have negative 9. So this also cancels out. And so I'm left with x squared at the top. All over, notice that down here you also have x squared into the square root of x squared plus 9 plus 3. And this x squared also cancel out, right? This x squared 1, x squared here 1. So the whole expression now becomes 1 all over, right? Square root of x squared plus 9 plus 3. And so we have to use this expression here, this um, rational function, by rationalizing, reduce it to this form. And now this form, when we put in zero, we we'll get uh, we don't get an indeterminate form. Okay, so that is the whole point. And so now instead of finding the limit as x approaches zero of this, you find the limit as x approaches zero of this expression here. Okay, so that is all we're going to do. So I'm going to clean this and then rewrite that. And so now. This expression becomes limits as x approaches 0. Instead of this, this is the same as 1 over square root of x squared plus 9 plus 3. Okay, so now if you put in 0, 0 is now part of, uh, it's now in the domain of this expression, right? So you can plug in 0 here. And that's going to give you 1 over 0 plus 9 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So you have 3 plus 3, and that is equal to 1 over 6. 
So the limit as x approaches 0 of this expression is equal to 1 over 6. All right? Good. So in expressions like that, whenever you get indeterminate forms, 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, things like that, uh, you, try to, you try to rationalize. Let's do the uh, second one, which is very similar. The second one is similar. So let's finish with that. So notice again here, x is approaching negative 1. And so straight away you see that this will go to 0, right? The denominator goes to 0. Up here, when x is negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 2. Sorry, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So again, you are getting the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Okay? So if you could factorize it, that is what you do. But because of the roots, it's easier if you um, rationalize it. Okay? So we're going to rationalize this as well and do something similar to what we did here. Okay. Good. So how do we rationalize that? Square root of, we have square root of x plus 2 minus 1 all over x plus 1. Okay. What you do is that, well, let me rewrite it in a more formal way. This is x plus 2 minus 1. Multiply this by square root of x plus 2. This, instead of minus, I'm going to have plus 1. Okay. All over the same thing here, I have the x plus 1. I multiply by this same factor, x plus 2 plus 1. So you see that this guy cancels out, and we have this, which is the same as that. So we haven't done anything um, to this. Good. But by writing it this way, see that we're going to have again square root times the square root of this. We're going to have x plus 2, right? Square root of this times that will give you root x plus 2. Negative 1 times that will give you negative root x plus 2. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. All over. I'm going to take this times that. Well, we can leave this as it is for now. Multiply by root x plus 2 plus 1. Okay? But notice again that this guy cancels out that. I have x plus 2 minus 1. So that's x plus 1. Right? So up there, we are going to have x plus 1. Right? All over x plus 1. Multiplying by root x plus 2 plus 1. So notice that the x plus 1 cancels the x plus 1 here. This guy cancels that. And so we are left with 1 all over root x plus 2 plus 1. Alright? So once again, when you uh, rationalize it, you reduce it to reduce this to the form that is easy to find the limit of. Okay? So we're going to find the limit of that. So the limit of this tends to find the limit of this expression here. And so we're going to have this limit now becomes, we're going to have limit as x approaches negative 1 of this guy is now equal to the limit of 1 over root x plus 2 plus 1. So you can put in negative 1 now. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, right? Square root of 1 is 1. So this is now the 1 over 1 plus 1, and that is equal to 1 over 2. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this is equal to 1 over 2. All right? So in such situations, this is what you do. In the next couple of uh, um, videos, we'll look at limits as infinity, OK? Instead of x going to 0 or 1 or some number, we want to see what happens if you are finding the limits as x goes to infinity, either positive or negative infinity of some expression, some function. This would be equal to x. Okay.